Hi, this is Jean-Michel. In this video, I am going to talk about LaFajol. What is LaFajol? It is a new software which enables a kind of electronic workbench, but for writing DSP algorithm, not only for audio, but also for image. I will showcase a few examples. The first example is the most simple code one can find. It's a very simple C++ struct with name, some inputs, a single integer, and a um, main loop which performs some random computation. So if you know gcc.codeball.com, um, the first view of LaFagel is a bit similar, but since it's written especially for that, it is much faster when changing code. You can see the assembly code immediating um, updating almost immediately. So that is the first part of the system, but the main point of the system is that um, it is able to perform introspection of the inputs and outputs. So notice that we aren't including any library of any kind. We are entirely using C++ reflection mechanism to detect what are the inputs and outputs of our processes. So here, for instance, it detects that I have a single output of type int and creates a scope that will display it. So for instance, if I do that, then immediately the scope starts changing. And since my algorithm wasn't updated, I can see, of course, that I am having a bug. So, and at the bottom, one can see a performance graph of our main loop. So here I can see that my loop is taking uh, 450 nanoseconds. So it's a way to basically see how um, the SP algorithm is going to, um, to change in time. So what interests us most, of course, is not only generating simple values, but uh, doing interesting signal processing things. So here, for instance, I have a first more advanced processor, which has some kind of input controls and um, we can see the input and output signal. So again, no library is used. This is based on the Avendish library, which allows to do introspection of a certain kind of um, definition, a kind of declarative definition of audio or media processors. So here it detects that I have a gain control here and it knows that uh, the range goes from zero to 30. So, well, here, um, well, we'll show afterwards how we can visualize the value of uh, this slider. And here we have an audio channel. So again, the library will know that something with a pointer to doubles called samples is most likely an audio bus. Likewise for the output. And now we have our main loop. So um, in our main loop, uh, we can see, for instance, that we have a while here. And well, what's interesting is that uh, when looking at the performance graph, we can immediately see that increasing our grunge value changes the processing time of our algorithm. Um, so the idea of LaFagel is that one will use it for developing new signal processors and needs kind of, you know, the analog of electronics labs, but for writing algorithm. And so in electronic labs, of course, what do we have? We have tools, we have um, generators, we have oscilloscopes, we have uh, frequency meters, this kind of thing. In LaFagel, the idea is that um, you write basically uh, your lab in code and you will be able to say, okay, for this input, I want to try uh, with, for instance, a sine wave or a file, things like that. And likewise, for our outputs, we may want, for instance, to uh, visualize the spectrum or uh, things like that instead of seeing the wave. And the idea is to provide a set of tools, visual feedback tools like this, which will allow people to very easily iterate when, when writing their code, because everything updates permanently. 
uh, as soon as uh, the code changes, it changes it, it and it updates all the controls, all the inputs, the puts. So uh, feedback is pretty immediate. Um, so a third thing is that uh, the idea of Lafagel is that it helps detecting performance issues. So here, for instance, we have a very simple processor. So notice that not all processors have a um, test harness. And by default, if you don't write a test harness, it will just uh, initialize all the inputs with controls and all the outputs with basic displays. And so here we have an interesting thing. If you look at uh, the, um, the graph, performance graph, you can see that um, if our prime value is zero, then here we have a hyperbolic tangent, which is a very, very basic distortion. And it doesn't take a lot of time. And if we increase a bit um, our tangent, it grows. And then something very fun happens. More uh, things look like a uh, square wave and the less um, our main loop takes time. So um, Lafagel, by virtue of being uh, very immediate, allows to quickly see these performance pitfalls. So until now, we only used most basic, you know, um, types and uh, standard C++ things which leads to a bit of verbosity, for instance, defining controls or inputs or outputs. And of course, um, we provide a way to simplif simplify things. So the idea is that uh, a library is able to provide its own types for uh, input, output, etc. And as long as these types match the uh, concepts in the C++ sense, for uh, say a floating point input, a audio sample output, then we can automatically map them. So for instance, here we have something which may look more like real processors. So, and the nice thing is that the syntax is pretty open. So here, for instance, we define an audio bus like this, a uh, slider like that. So inputs and outputs now take only one line and this can lead to pretty concise code. So um, that will be it for uh, the basic audio things. And the last interesting point is that the system is also able to be used for image processing. So here, for instance, um, I have a, uh, an image processor and I can see live, for instance, perform code modifications and see things changing as soon as I change my code. Um, so yeah, so one thing that we can see is, so here for instance, we have our harness, which allows to choose either a picture of my beautiful kitten Shashimi, but we could instead say, okay, I want to uh, run this algorithm with white noise instead. And um, you may have noticed that it took much less time. It's because the white noise resolution is much smaller than the big picture of my kitty. And uh, we may want to add, for instance, a control. So for instance, here I do something like this. Um, power, which will go from one to 10 and start at one. And here we, we just declare a simple variable and this variable inside hash slater f32, there is only one float. It is if you check its size of its size of float and all the metadata is stored um, basically at compile time. So it never, unlike other media frameworks, it never gives a runtime cost and everything fits very nicely in cache, things like that. And now if we want to access our power variable, then since it's all just C++ struct, then here, for instance, instead of uh, having, you know, our power here, we can just do, okay, input.power. And okay, now we have to add our control in our harness. And um, say, so, okay, I want a control. Okay, and I may have made a mistake. Uh, input, okay, that's because I wrote input instead of inputs. 
Yep. And now we have our power and uh, we can change it live and see the result immediately. And we can see that this doesn't make a lot of difference for four. I wonder if we increase the power, if this changes anything, no. So yeah, so this is it for the main things. And uh, there are a couple of other useful features. So for instance, um, we can add, uh, if we have like intermediate values, uh, at any point we can say, okay, uh, here I want to visualize um, out zero and we will be able to plot any value and uh, perform computations, things like that, and um, things update immediately. And uh, we are also able to do this and say, okay, I want to see how much one iteration of this inner loop costs. So here we can see that um, the entire loop takes us something like 40, 50 microseconds and processing one sample takes 70 nanoseconds, something like that. So yeah, that's it. That is uh, La Fajol. It is going to be released soon. Oh, and one thing before I forget, of course we can also uh, see and uh, what is um, what kind of performance inf improvement can give us various compiled flags. So at the bottom, for instance, I can type this and here it will take a bit more time to recompile. And here I can see a big, big decrease, a big drop here as soon as I add more better compilation flags. So yes, O3 is better than O1. And um, yeah, so that is for La Fajol and hopefully it, it will be released later this year. Thanks for watching.